Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. I've been super excited about this interview, just so you know, because um, I think that you and I have a lot of the same passions with women, but our backgrounds are so radically different. You've been in the finance world and really in the C-suite for a very, very long time. And I think it will be really fun for our audience to hear a little bit about your journey. Like how, how did that happen for you? And and when you got there, were you in love with it? Like, <laughs> will you talk a little, talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm yeah. super excited as well. Um, so when I first went to college, um, I wanted to be a brain surgeon, and I didn't even want to go into finance. Growing up, I my both my parents were entrepreneurs, and they both had both businesses, and so I kind of grew up with that entrepreneur spirit and. But I wanted to be, I wanted to help people because that was my passion is really mm-hmm. helping, giving back to people. That's where my heart was. And when I got into college and started working in the hospitals, I just said, this just wasn't for me. <laughs> um, so then I went into more of the finance. I graduated with a with an accounting degree and then worked towards my master's. But, you know, it was, I think, numbers and just business and giving back and seeing businesses scale and people grow is a passion of mine. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's kind of why I kind of pivoted and went into that direction. Isn't it so cool for you, though? Because I think so many of us, that's what happens. And we go to school and we think, oh, we want to do this. And then you're like, the reality of that is, oh, yeah, I really don't want to do this. Yes. <laughs> but you're fortunate in that you found something you're super passionate about and you've helped a lot of businesses. I also know that you mentor a lot of women and you've helped with women to really see themselves growing in a lot of different areas. Um, one of the things that I think you and I have so much in common is we're both moms of girls, although you have three and I only have two, but will you talk a little bit about that piece, like being a mom and um, you were in a very strong corporate environment, now you're more in an entrepreneurial role. Will you talk a little bit about that transition and maybe how did you, you say something that I really appreciate. We were talking about being moms and I said balance and you said, no, no balance. <laughs> it's not balance. It's rhythm. And I love that. It's really a really great way to look at it. So we talk a little bit about how that transition happened for you. Yeah. You know, I think that growing up, you know, and seeing my parents really kind of give me that mm-hmm. example a little bit. But, you know, one of the one of the tr- biggest traits I want my girls to be able to do is have good work ethics as well as good, good character traits. But it is hard, and I think, you know, with having kids and having a family and trying to scale, whether it's in your own personal business or in the corporate world, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, it's a hard struggle. And especially for women, I think that we feel that, you know, our heartstrings pull a lot because we feel like, you know, we need to be the, the best mom and the perfect mom. And we want to, you know, grow our career and that's our passion too. And we want to be able to, you know, financially be stable and any more in today's society, we really have both people, you know, whether you are, you know, in, in a partnership or not, you both have to work, unfortunately, um, sometimes, right? In most, in most American households. Right. But, yeah. you know, and so, I want to always be an example to my kids. And I think that that's one of the things that we all want to do, but, you know, finding, finding that rhythm, I think is so important because you can't necessarily balance it because one, one side always has to give it some point. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of find the rhythm and just realize that there's always going to be ebbs and flows Mm -hmm. and what's important and whether you're at, at the office or you're, or you're working or whether at your home, it's making sure I feel like is being present in the moment, making those connections right. and being in present and having just those little moments. It's not about the number of moments you spend. It's really about the quality of moments that you're spending there. And I think it's so important with, with my girls is I want them to be hardworking. I want them to be dedicated, but I want them to have a good heart and a soft heart mm-hmm. and also live in their passion because we're so much more successful and happier if we actually are living what our true light is 
in our passion, no matter what environment that's in. You know what I love about that is I feel like you just spoke to kind of both of our audiences, which we have a lot of women that are aspiring to that six figures. And in having you on, I was really hopeful that we could pull out some things that would really help to guide them as they're growing in their career or their entrepreneurial journey. But I think you also spoke to a lot of women that are, are at that six figure place where they, that's a struggle. It, it really is. And it's hard, I think, as women to be okay with the fact that you are sometimes pulled in different directions and we're never going to be perfect. Like <laughs> it's an illusion. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Um, so I love hearing that from you. Will you share, this is one question that I love to ask women. Will you share, do you remember when you hit six figures and what that felt like for you? Yeah. Um, when I first hit six figures, I was in my early thirties. Um, and I actually was 30 years old and on my 30th birthday, I went and bought myself, I was a single mom and I went and bought myself a brand new BMW. I went to the, the lot and said, <laughs> that's the one I want. And it was, it was great to be able to feel that I had accomplished something. Mm -hmm. Um, it was great to feel, you know, and be able to do it on my own and be a single mom at the same time was, you know, trying to, 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 to fight for the top. Right. Um, and being in finance and being in that type of environment, I'm really around mostly men. And mm -hmm. so it was even harder, I think for me or for a woman in that environment when you're, it's primarily men to get there. Even it's even harder. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I think that one of those things is, is that there's never a can't, right. You either do it or you don't. And, and women oftentimes don't give themselves enough credit. And going back to your yeah. earlier comment is, you know, it's okay to fail. We learn in our biggest struggles in life oh is oftentimes when we fail at something mm -hmm. and we just get back up and it's really not failing. It's really a blessing. And I think if we look at it as a blessing and say, you know what, what can I learn from this and what can I take from this? Because it's not really a failure. And I think that's one of the biggest things I think we can teach our kids, especially young women. And in, in today's society is we're not failing. We're just growing mm -hmm. and you can be whatever you want to be and find what really is truly in your heart and what you're passionate about. Because if you can find what that is, you'll be happier and more successful because you're living your purpose. And you just watch people come alive, men and women, but I love watching women when you can just see, you just see it in them. They light up when they talk about what they do or they talk about their lives. It's such a difference in who they are as a person. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I love that piece. Yeah. So um, you talked about basically failing your way, right? Learning in that process. Is there a book, a podcast? Is there something that when you're mentoring younger women or even peers that are pulling on you, is there something that you recommend to people on a regular basis? Yeah. You know, I spend 60 minutes a day on some type of education, mm -hmm. whether it's a skill, a soft skill or a hard skill. I think it's always important to continue to learn and, and, or listen. I listen to a lot of books on tape and I listen to a ton of podcasts and it's a variety. I'll, I love to listen to Oprah. I love to listen to Brene Brown. I love to listen to, you know, um, life coach, a lot of life coach stuff, a lot of mind shift change. Um, but I would say, I think my biggest one, um, has been probably, um, Brene Brown and, um, also the work oh, and uh -huh. the work is, um, from Brian Katie, Brian Katie, you know, because a lot of that is about perception. Mm -hmm. And I think as women, we go into, I want to be a super woman, mom, work, you know, and do all that. And oftentimes our own perception of ourselves is what sets us back and doesn't allow us to accomplish what we want to. Mm -hmm. So really looking at it and saying, is this really true or is it just a mind game? And my mind a lot kind of setting me back and holding me back to really scaling to what you really want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I think that that was probably what the, one of the things, and she said, you've got three, three things you've got, you know, God's, God's will, 
You've got other people's opinions, right? And you have your own opinion. And what other people, what other people's opinions of you, it doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's one of the things that we we look so much is is what is somebody going to judge us? Judge us because we don't might not be you know dressed this way, or or mm -hmm. judge us because you know our kids are acting this way or or doing this. It's really what matters is what we that we have self love for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think if you can have those, you can scale so much more, and and be even high you know we hit those six figures and beyond because we set our own limitations. That's such a great recommendation. So what am I not asking you? We have all of these women <laughs> listening. <laughs> but I, I think, you know, speak to that younger, that younger you, let's say, that is in that place where they're really wanting to get to six figures, just because it's this perception of success, right? What would you yeah. say to that younger, that younger woman? I would say you can do it. Whatever you want to set your mind to, you can definitely do it. Um, there's always there's always a will, and really to take the moments to to have self love for yourself and, and self care. Take those little moments, and I think one of the pivotal points in my life was when I wrote my north star. I wrote my purpose and mission, and I dived down in and really looked at that. And when I read it back to myself. I was like, oh my gosh, that really is me. And then finding where does my place fit within that? And I think that was one of those moments where it's like, okay, now I know career rise exactly where I want to go and what I want to achieve because I'm living my purpose as well as being able to succeed and help others. And so I would recommend for anybody to take the time you know, to write what your, your your personal mission is. We write them for businesses and, and missions and visions, but we don't really write them for ourselves. And so if you take that time to do that, I think it really brings clarity and really helps focus. And I think the other part is, is you know, I think education is so important, but you know what? It's not going to get you there. What gets you there is your grit. Mm -hmm. And I think if people can really look at you know, and even today, you know, a lot of the universities are saying, you know, it's important to have a degree in certain things, but don't, I think women oftentimes set themselves in, well, I can't achieve that, or I can't get that because I don't have that diploma, or I don't have that degree. I don't think that that's true. I think we can teach ourselves a lot, and we can get there, and we can walk side by side without even having that. I have a question on that. So you brought up something for me in that. What do you think of um, groups? Oh. You know, have you had mentors? Have you had groups that you joined that were really pivotal in helping you to maybe learn that skill set or meet that person that helped you to learn that skill set? Because I oftentimes hear this when I interview women that it's, oh, you know, this set of women that I was around or this person really had a had a big role in my life. Yeah, I have to say. One of my mentors, and I think that um, everybody needs a mentor, mm -hmm. and I think that more women should mentor women. We have a tendency to be competitive and not want to really help and and mentor or, you know, help encourage women. And I think that that's one of the the, the most difficult things in in our today's society is that. So I encourage everybody to you know to go out and pick somebody, even if it's one time a year. Really take the opportunity to do that and mentor somebody because you get, you learn so much about you in the process of doing it. Absolutely. So you grow. So both sides grow, and mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's an amazing opportunity. But I think one of the one of my mentors was when I was um, first internal auditing all around the country, and um, she was the CFO of a large, huge organization. And she was so kind, and she took the time to really see, you know, and hear me. And I think that that was one of the one of the pivotal moments is to see that and know, like, hey, I can accomplish that, and I can do that too. Um, and what a huge example she set, because you do that with people now, right? So I do. What a huge compliment to her. So. Yeah, and there's a lot of women out there, um, but I think sometimes we don't look at or ask. Hey, you know what? I highly think very highly of you. Mm -hmm. Would you mind mentoring me? I think also it takes the other side too is is asking for that, and yeah. we, we it shows weakness sometimes, so we don't like to do that. But oh, I think it's a great you know it's it's important to it's important on both sides. I think mm -hmm. so true. 
So you mentioned struggles and we all have them and you made an incredible point in learning from them. Would you mind maybe sharing one or two of yours and how you learned from it? Maybe one that really sticks out for you? Um, yeah, I definitely think that, you know, we all go through so many struggles, um, earning and getting to the six figures. You do have a lot, both internally with yourselves. Um, I think we also struggle, you know, with our kids and trying to raise our kids and not feeling like we're, we're there, but we have this fire in us that wants, that's burning, that we want to get there. Um, because, you know, that's part of our passion and learning from that. I think part of, I think my two biggest struggles I would have to say is um, probably not being there all the time for my kids as much as I could have or, or should have or felt like I did. Mm -hmm. um, even though I know I was there and they, you know, I feel like I'm a great mom, um, I definitely feel like that was probably one of my biggest struggles um, is to feel like I had to pick between earning and, and getting to the top or my kids, and I, so that was definitely one. And I think, um, can I just stop you for a second yeah. on that? Because I think every woman out there, that's their struggle. I remember a friend asking me early on, what are you struggling with the most? And I said, honestly, it's, I know I can perform over here, but every time I'm here, it's pulling me that I'm not with my kids. And I have this emotional challenge always. And coming to terms with that, or to your point, kind of the ebb and flow of it and the way that I handled that um, was probably one of the biggest challenges in my career ever. So, and I think every mother out there that has an entrepreneurial role or is in the corporate environment and wanting to excel, I think we all like meet in that place, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but it's difficult because we're struggling with an internal passion, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we want to drive. That is so, it, it's, a, it's a fire within us, right? It's a drive within us to get to there. But then it also is a drive to spend and be a great mom. But I think you can have both. Mm -hmm. It's just finding and picking those moments. So I have a lady come every year. I love my house decorated. I have every, every ho holiday she comes and she cleans and, and decorates my house. I don't have the time to do that. Mm -hmm. I have somebody take care of my, my laundry and clean my house so that I have those times to spend with my kids. So it's really just trying to find your balance mm -hmm. and what you can balance with so that way you're able to manage. And sometimes it takes a lifetime to figure that out. I have a calendar and I have a specific <laughs> time and dates for everything to fit everything in. But you, know, you just have to find your groove because you can honestly have it all. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned, and I love this word, rhythm, the rhythm that you find. Well, you talk about finding that. And, and how, do you, how do you find that for you? Um, so I think for me, I think it, it varies for every woman, right? And I think it also varies at different stages of life, both from kids' ages, um, things that are going on, pivotal moments, um, as well as community or in community stuff, right? So you have to, you, so it's all kind of plays into the same role, right? Um, I think for me, trying to find, and I don't know if I ever really find the exact rhythm, and I don't think anybody will ever, right, find the exact rhythm, so you're, oh, it's always changing. Um, I think one of the ways that I did was is to really put what was the highest priority, mm -hmm. right? Where was my list? And I make a list of everything that I need to do at the end of the day for the very next day. So I end with here's everything, and then that way I'm starting out the, moment, the morning with my to-do list, things that I need to accomplish, and I always pick the most difficult things that I don't want to do first because one of, oftentimes if it's at the end of the day, we don't want to get to it. Also, we procrastinate because we don't want to do it. And it usually takes us twice as long because we don't want to do it. So, true. so if you do those things and focus them on the morning when you're fresh, mm -hmm. you get them done so much faster and you psychologically feel more accomplished because it was the worst thing on your list and you ended up getting it done. So I always try to do that. I think it helping, starting with the to-do list at the end of the day, 
really helps focus. And then I also, it's psychologically known that if you do the to-do list at the end of the day, throughout the night, you're already strategizing in your subconscious of ways to already deal with the things and already mark things off of your to-do list by the next morning. Mm -hmm. So that's one that of the ways that I do That is like a course. The Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a great, oh my gosh, I love this because... I, I agree. And I've been in that place in my life where I'm like, oh yeah, let's move that down. Let's move that down. Okay. Let's move that to the next day. And then you feel like a failure because you didn't get it done. But if you just knock it out, it's like, oh, like give myself a pat on the back. Such, yep. It's such a great lesson in any area of life, right? Yeah. Work, exercise, <laughs> like <laughs> everything. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. And I, and too, is I try to start between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m., before kids get up, before I have to do school and, you know, good kids to school or, or get into the work mode is I try to always, you know, knock those things out early before anybody else is awake because then I don't have any distractions either. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of the things. And then I block out an hour and a half getting kids ready, you know, making lunches, breakfast, having that connection moment with them, taking them to school. And then I go right back into work mode. Um, and so I think that, you know, making sure that whatever fits into your schedule and making, like I said earlier, is those little times and those little moments that you are spending, that you are present, that you're not on your phone while trying to make breakfast or, mm -hmm. you know, that it's all about them in those moments. You have an hour, you have, you know, two or three hours throughout the day that you can make the connection. Mm -hmm. And I also try to uh, always make holidays and, and birthdays special. Um, because that's the little mem the little memories and moments with my kids that they think they will always remember. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that mom was working and, and driving, right? Is that, hey, these are the little moments and memories we made yeah. together. And I, I put little notes in their lunches. I put little notes in their backpack. So, and, and send them little text messages so they know that I love them and that I'm there for them. And mm -hmm. those are one some of the ways too that I try to balance and, and, and have that rhythm with making sure that my kids and my family knows that I love them, even though I'm driving and I might be, you know, mm -hmm. traveling a lot or I might be, you know, doing other things that they know that I care. It's so interesting to me. I'm super blessed in that I'm surrounded by a lot of amazing women like you. And it's interesting to listen to each of you because there is so many similarities when I interview women in what I would call calendar aware, meaning you know exactly what's going on your calendar, when it's going on your calendar. And, and for me, I think those, those things leave clues for the women that are listening, that want to aspire to six figures, right? That are saying, I want to be Cheryl. Like, okay, take take note of the things that you do that make your life successful. And I just think it's such a powerful way to model. So again, thank you. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Thank yeah. you. So you mentioned having someone come in and do things for you, right? Maybe it's cleaning, maybe it's cooking, the things that pull you away. I think that there's a lot of women that would have a lot of guilt in that, like, oh, but I'm the one that has to clean. Oh, I'm the one that has to cook or I'm the one that has to decorate. So how do you manage that mentally? Well, I don't think we all, sh all should feel guilty about having to do all of those things, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think that, you know, it's all about priorities, right? Mm -hmm. And where your ultimate goal is and going kind of going back to that north star right your your mission and, and your your vision of yourself and and where you want to be and you're going to have to set certain priorities and other things are just going to have to be on the table you know off the table so that you can focus on mm -hmm. scaling to those six figures and beyond that so i think that people shouldn't feel so guilty and you know, honestly, once you do it, it's amazing because you don't have to worry about it. You, you you leave the house and you come back and it's clean and it's laundry's done and your house is decorated. Awesome. It's great. <laughs> it actually feels like you're ta kind of taking care of your self-love because the guilt's making you do it even though you really don't want to. Mm -hmm. So learning, learning that it's okay, right, going back to some of that failure. It's not a failure. It's actually a more of accomplishment because now you can take your kids to lunch mm -hmm. instead of spending three hours cleaning. Yeah, when you were saying it, I was actually thinking, I hope that women are really hearing this because I think there are those of us that feel like, 
oh, but if I don't do it, then I'm not doing like the right thing. And there are those women that love to cook. So cook, but maybe don't clean. Or yeah. the women that love to decorate. That is definitely not my forte. <laughs> like, I need, <laughs> if I could pay someone to come and make my house look beautiful, because it's not something I do well, right? Yeah. It's, I feel like what you're saying is pick your priority and, and allow yourself to be okay with that, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. We, we're not always going to be everything, right? right? But we can, you know, do what works for us. Mm -hmm. And I think also is, you are making the money to do it. Spoil yourself by going out and having somebody else do it mm -hmm. instead of you trying to painfully go through something you don't want to do mm -hmm. anyways, right? Just because you feel guilty of having to do it. It, you know, it actually feels really good to, to be able to know <laughs> that you have the money to have somebody come and do it. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. This is probably more speaking to women that have already achieved six figures and beyond that I remember a mentor of mine said to me early on, pay an assistant. And I'm like, oh, but it's so much money. She's like, it will be the best money you have ever spent in your life. Pay an assistant. And now I look back and I, I'm so grateful for her giving me like that wisdom and that freedom to do that because it created so much more open time for me. And I feel like you're saying that in different stages, right? Yep. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's house or whether it's an assistant or whether it's mm -hmm. you know, I have, I have somebody come in and run all my errands once a week for me because I just don't have time mm -hmm. to do it. But it's not that I don't have time; it's just my time is better spent on some other things that I really want to do. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily taking it and just giving it to somebody else. I just don't, you know, I have the I and and we have the luxury of being able to do that. Mm -hmm. Such great wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your wisdom. Um, I, like I said, leaning into this, I was really, really excited about this interview and um, I just appreciate your time. So thank you for doing it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you for having me. I really yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com. 